So it says SATA 3.3 gigabytes per second. This is the important thing to look at, to know on your motherboard, so that when you're looking here, you pick this one instead of that one. And these are really the only two options you should ever have. This is for old motherboards. This is for new ones. These are much faster. Uh, capacity, you can do the power search here. You can like select, you want uh, 500 and up, <coughs> 500 gigs and up. Um, you want, you don't want anything less than 7200 RPMs. Um, and, okay, so here's another thing that's important. Okay, so this is the standard size. 3.5 is the standard size, 2.5 is not. Um, this is important, too. Um, if you want the 32 meg cache, it actually gives you an amazing boost to speed, especially when you're doing, a, like, when you're when you're doing a lot of processes that cause what are known as page faults, um, both increasing the amount of memory that you have and um, making it so your cache on your hard drive is the 32 instead of the 16 is very bravo. Um, there isn't even 60. Oh, sorry, there isn't even 32 available for the uh, IDE Ultra. 16 is the best that they have, but um, let's search for the 32 right here. Um, it's also known as 7200.11 when it's 32 uh, megabytes. That's basically the same thing. Uh, and we have a 500 gig right here and very nice price, $70. Uh, this would be a great one to get, so I would recommend that. Uh, when you get the higher RPM ones, uh, you usually get a much smaller hard drive, one that's about 50 gigs or 100 gigs in that range. And then a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll only put their boot uh, their their um, operating system on that drive and then use another drive to store all of their programs and stuff like that. And what that does is since your operating system is accessed almost half the time by your CPU chip, um, it is able to split its hard drive use between the programs that it's running and the operating system. And that gives like an incredible boost to the speed of your computer. So you would have one of these and then you would go, you would get, well, leave all that. Uh, actually, let's do any. And then you'd go to only these types of ones. And let's see if I can find any, if I've got that right. Go away. Nope. Okay, so I've got to, let's see, do any search. Yeah, right here, Western, okay. So this is a kind of expensive, as you can see. It's 160 instead of just 60, but it's got the 10,000 RPMs plus the fact that it's 3.0 gigabytes per second hard drive. Um, what that allows is if you just put your uh, operating system on this, there's also smaller ones, but I, this is the one that came up. Um, it makes it so your operating system just absolutely flies on that hard drive. So it's something I would recommend. Um, and then lastly, ah yes, the mo this is one of the most overlooked parts on the computer, the power supply. This one right here, the one that showed up in the upper left, is my favorite one. Uh, 700 watts is a little bit more than you might need. Uh, in fact, this one, wow. Uh, 500 watts is pretty good. Um, 700 watts kind of lets you be able to put a whole bunch more hard drives and maybe a second video card in there and you don't really have to worry about uh, your uh, power supply because it's still it's already powerful enough to handle it. Um, but then we've got uh, the uh, 500 watt one here that would be good too. But let's look at this one for now. And then what you want to do is beyond just the wattage because you can have a really high wattage power supply that can't power your parts the most important thing you look at is the 12 volt line. What you can do here is you can see t uh, the 12 volt line 1, 12 volt line 2, 12 volt line 3, and 12 volt line 4. Those are the most important. Um, most, some of the older power supplies, some of the weaker power supplies that are like the 300 watt and whatever, um, they'll have something like just one 12 volt line or maybe two 12 volt lines and they'll have like eight amps down each one. Um, I recommend if you have like a pretty modern power supply, I mean, sorry, pretty modern computer, that you have at least 40 amps, preferably over 60. What we have right here is um, 84, if I'm counting right, no, 72. We got 72 right here, which is plenty, which is a really good amount of uh, um, amperage to go down there. Um, that uh, is basically the core, I mean, that, well, yeah, that is the core of the computer. That's essentially all there is to a computer. Um, of course, if you had a case, that would go really well with it too, so you can put all your parts together and not have them just sitting out. Cases are generally relatively inexpensive. If you pay more than 50 bucks for a case, I think you're paying too much, but it's up to you on that. 
um, and that gives you a good idea of how to set up your computer. Um, also, uh, one thing you want to know, especially with some of the better uh, motherboards, like this Asus one, right? Well, Asus in general, uh, they always come with a manual, and on the manual it tells you how the CPU chip uh, connects to the motherboard, how the memory connects, how the uh, actually wait how the memory connects, and then how the video card connects. It shows how all those things connect. And then the slightly more complicated thing is always um, the case has like the H uh, hard drive light, the power switch, the USB port in the front, the USB port in the back, all these things that are associated with a case that when you're dealing with the motherboard, you have to have little wires that connect between them. And it comes with those wires, um, but you'll have to look through the manual to see where they're supposed to plug in on, on the motherboard. You're really not going to hurt anything if you do it wrong. That part just won't work until you've got it plugged in correctly. And it takes a little while, but you'll get used to it. And one other thing is when you put when you mount the motherboard into the case uh, you want to do two different things one you want to screw in the stud screws or I think that's what they're called the ones that are like holes at the top put those into the case first set the motherboard on top of that and then you've got the top screws to actually screw the motherboard in this keeps a certain spacing between the case and the motherboard protects it a bit uh, you don't have to have that but it's a big risk if you don't so I don't recommend it um, and the next thing is when you actually plug the motherboard in, and especially when you plug the CPU chip in, because it's a very sensitive piece of software, so hardware, <laughs> um, have the power supply already hooked up and plugged into the wall. So the power supply is in the case, screwed in, and plugged into the wall. Uh, I don't think it matters if it's turned on or off, but what that does is it basically creates you, uh, an ESD touch plate out of your case, uh, essentially reducing the amount of static that you have. Um, because static is your enemy when you build a computer. But uh, if you keep all these things in mind, you should be able to build your own computer. And like I said, it can save you um, hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And you get it exactly how you want it, and you are able to upgrade it in the future. So this is going to be kind of a long little tutorial, but I think it's very important. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'll talk to you guys another time.